Welcome back to another issue. I'm Beastie Boy. I'm Table. I'm Red. It is I, Shino Brando. And in this issue, Red leads us on a Digi adventure to become Digi destined through all Digimon. So, where I'd like to start this issue is how familiar is everybody with Digimon as a franchise? Did you know that 37% of you aren't subscribed to the channel on YouTube? You can help change that by hitting the subscribe button just below the video. And now back to the show. I know some things, not a lot, but some things. Childhood I memories. I know some seasons, and that's about it. Okay, so back in the day, in the 90s, let's let's roll our heads back to that, where some of us were literal infants, and some of us, you know, were graduating high school or something. You are so correct. <laughs> and Jesus. in the fad of Tamagotchis. I owned three. Did they uh, die? I owned one as well. Two of them survived. I gave up one for adoption. Aww. Oh. Oh. Well, Tough then. parenting like, decision. Do you, mm-hmm. you have a Tamagotchi? I had a few every now and then. Okay, so Digimon started its life as actually the male equivalent in Japan to Tamagotchi. It didn't if Tamagotchi had a fighting ring. ring. Exactly. <laughs> Jesus. And so the concept, so the, the main people that created Digimon get attributed to three people. One is in the character designer at Bandai. The Tamagotchi creator herself also helped create Digimon. And then one is the actual sprite creator inside of the Digimon V toy. The other thing that people get confused in Digimon is that it was a Pokemon ripoff. I'm here to stand on my soapbox and say that's just actually untrue. The fact that they both came out at the same time is simply by fluke. I kind of always never thought that way when it first came, when they both came out, right? I was, I figured just, it was just like one concept that, you know, went two different ways, right? Like, yeah, one doing a version of some of that idea and someone's doing another version of that kind of idea, right? Never really like a ripoff, just like that, yeah, right? Like, that's like, get, yeah, that's like getting mad at like, like all of like Street Fighter. That's like, you get mad at any fighting game in the world and be like, well, whatever. I mean, it's, it's, it's a different engine. It's doing something different. So, I mean, it can't be a ripoff, right? Mm-hmm. So, Right, if at best homage, at worst, he he yeah. hours. So the original V Pet, the original toy, was a 16 bit by 16 bit screen, leading to the developers having to get creative on the designs because you need to squish it in, you know, a super small screen. So this is why when you see a bunch of the actual designs for the original cast of Digimon, your your main starters as per se, our main protagonists are simple enough to be on 16 by 16. But detailed enough so that way when they're in animation, they work perfectly. Those two branches work together like hardcore. Like some of the people also worked on the games that also worked on the actual animation. So this is why, for example, Agumon is that sort of like he's got himself a big head and a neck and humanoid-ish. And he's got a certain stance to him because he was designed for a 16 by 16 bit screen. And then here he is. He had to look particularly distinct. features... But, like, blocky on purpose. Right. What if I told you that Digimon's initial designs, the our later evolutions, were very much inspired by Marvel Comics at the time because they had just found their way to Japan? Mm-hmm. For example, the big cannons and the big guns that you see, like, massively attributed to the franchise got started by, for example, Cable of the X-Men. I could see that. <laughs> this makes interesting sense. Friends share the design elements. It's only <laughs> stealing if they call the police. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's true that it, it looks so much like it, like you're saying. It, everybody looks very Rob Liefeld almost. The, some of the references that, like, with the bigger chest plates in later evolutions, <laughs> straight up are Rob Liefeld's Captain America. You can find official sources that say, yeah, this is where we started the inspiration from. And we're like, oh, like, big chest. Oh, okay, people in America must, like, characters with big chests not knowing that yes we did but meh. so funny man so with a tamagotchi out of the way and an animated series we start with adventure one so mm. this anime premiered on march 7 1999 and ran until march 26 2000 who remembers some of the main characters anybody i do i was like old enough to be aware <laughs> <laughs> i have the gist of some of them ty was big hair lad you had mm. Sora with a hat. You had yeah. Mimi also with a hat, but a different one. You had the small annoying lad with spiky hair. And then you had the tall annoying lad with spiky hair who was here to be an asshole. <laughs> and so then there was the nerd and the very, very small child. 
So Matt and Iggy. Perfect. Okay. And Ken. You got them all. But here's <laughs> just for, for Leo. So before I start this proper, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go off their English names for almost entirely of this episode. In Japan, this one time in this series, I will talk about the differences between the Japanese names and the English names. But here we go. So Tai hmm. or Tai Chi in Japan. We have Matt or Yamato in Japan. We have mm-hmm. Sora, who just kept her name. We have Izzy, the computer one, but his Japanese name is Koshiro. We have Mimi, who kept her name. We have Joe, who kept his name. We have TK in English, but Japanese, he's Takeru. And then we have Kari, but in Japan, it's Hikari. Surprising that most of them kept their names, if anything. Yeah. Close and, as uh, possible. Yeah. It's sort of a plot detail that Hikari, or Kari, joins them later through a series of events. And now for some plot. On August 1st, 1999, now fan dub Digimon Day, seven kids are transported from summer camp and sent to the digital world. Upon entering, the kids get small digital devices, their digivices, that eventually help their partner creatures, Digimon, digital monsters, transition to the next stage of evolution, or Digivolve. The word digi is in fact slapped everywhere they could possibly put it. (laughs) <laughs> and if you're not ready to hear that seven times for every breath we take, I'm sorry in advance. For most series, they follow a very strict transformation order. And it goes in training, which are their super baby forms. We have their rookie, which is the one you consistently see. That's Agumon. Mm-hmm. We have your champion level, which is Greymon, for example. We have yeah. your ultimate level, which is Metal Greymon. Mm-hmm. And then you've got their Mega level, which is like War Greymon. And every time they digivolve, they need something for the next step. The kids need to not only believe in this transformation, that it can happen and they want to strive for more or be put in a situation where it's super tense and they need to co- accomplish this goal. But it's a symbiotic relationship, right? If, for example, if Ty was in such, you know, deep and depressed and just anger... And Agumon was ready and wanting to digivolve. Agumon could achieve something called a dark digivolution. And that is where you get our big skeleton guy that's on screen currently. So if you're really sad, all of your flesh is stripped away and you become the scariest man in town. (coughs) In this particular example, yes. In O2 it doesn't happen. In Tamers it happens. And a couple other series it happens. And I'll make note of it as we keep going. So... For more plot of the original series, the kids keep wandering around for a little while going, oh, how do we get home? And then Mr. Magical Man himself named Jenai. Oh, yeah. You're wondering how you pronounce that. You just got to sound like Forrest Gump saying Jenny. Pop. Oh, dear. And they find out that they are the Chosen Ones. What do you think the Chosen Ones are called? <laughs> me, teacher. Me. Me. Yeah, go ahead. Shido, go ahead. <coughs> the Digi-Destined. S- still stupid. But they learned that they were not the first team of Digidestin, but they are just a team of Digidestin. Digidestin isn't the chosen one. It's more like a Power Rangers group, you know? Yes, in fact. Except for there's not a man in a tube, you know, wondering what the hell's going on. They don't need a man in a tube. They have Captain Exposition and all of these weird monsters to hang out with. <clears throat> Our first villain of the series is a creature called Devimon. He's based on a devil. A villain that will haunt our main character of TK for the next 15 years of his life. Ah! Patamon, okay, this little orange guy with wings, is the last of the original seven to digivolve. To uh, hey, achieve his next level of evolution and strength. Hey, okay. okay. During the fight with Devimon, Devimon hits... Uh, almost hits TK. Patamon achieves his next evolution. It gets beat the shit out of, but stops the villain anyway. The interesting part about Digimon is unlike, say, Pokemon, let's call it its rival series, when something faints or dies, it doesn't just cease existing. It's data. So it just gets reconfigured into an egg and then hatches and then goes through life again. So when this big creature dies... It scars this poor child because he doesn't know that yet. <laughs> and he watches his be- very best friend die in front of him. Therapy. This this boy is supposed to be like seven or eight. So much therapy. 
It's not even like as if his dog died in front of him, which would be bad enough. Because this th- these things talk. These things are their friends. They rely on them. They just, they take comfort in them. This was, this was watching his best friend die. They're often reminded how best friend they are in almost every fucking episode. Absolutely not wrong at all. So, as we continue through our series, one still, we are shown these things called crests. And each crest is a certain ability. And let me just blow through them real fast. Ty is courage. Matt is friendship. Sora is love. Mimi is sincerity. Izzy is knowledge because he's the computer kid. Joe is reliability. TK is hope. And Kari is light. These get important, unfortunately. Near the end of our series, we, well, the final villain of our entire series is an evil Digimon named Venom Myotismon. It is straight up the devil. It is straight up Satan 666, number of the beast. It's, he looks super dumb. But <laughs> he's going to destroy the earth because of course he is. He doesn't uh, even live there. Right. You, ha- you have to have ambitions and goals. Okay? This is true. As does that. every villain do. So he, yeah, he, he, right. chose he that, wants to destroy the earth. And yeah. so the Digimon come to the human world along with the kids. And they realize that the form that they had achieved up to were not good enough. So they find this prophecy and TK and Kari's Digimon need to digivolve to their next stage, shoot their siblings, which are Matt and Ty respectively, with arrows representing, you know, their attributes. So that way their brothers can achieve their next stage of evolution properly. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, they, I forgot they got reduced to batteries. They sure did. And that's how we get our super important War Greymon and Metal Garurumon. Batteries. That makes those two battery powered. It sure does. Even though infinite batteries, because, you know, power of friendship. Oh, oh, that's your... life, yes. <laughs> oh boy, they're, they're permanently rechargeable. That's never going away. No. Truly. Never. If that wasn't big and bad enough... We get a villain called Apocalymon. Guess what he is? <laughs> Apocalypse. The Apocalypse, given form. I don't know. Apocalypse sounds almost cuddly, you know? <laughs> Let's get a Ragnamon in there for no reason. Is there a Ragnamon? I'm sorry. <laughs> On screen is Ragnamon right now. So much. <laughs> because before you, know, you can say it. The editor knows there is. It's on screen. Oh, oh man. man. Apocalymon threatens to destroy both worlds because he can. Oh, of course. Okay. And through the power of friendship and, you know, punch the bad guy real hard. And the power was inside you all along. True. Should have the been last there two episodes place. are them in their own head going like, uh, how do I exhibit the power of courage and friendship and love? Uh, hug someone, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> You'd think. But alas, it involves <laughs> more trauma. <laughs> God damn. But through the power of friendship, the bad guy gets absolutely dunked on and the kids <laughs> have to say goodbye to their partners for the first time. And it's at this point, we don't know if we will ever see the partners ever again. But of course, this series made money and rolled in the shit. We all know what people do with money. <laughs> they make stupid sequels. And so here is Adventure 02. Airing one year after O1 wrapped up, it picks up four-ish years after the end of Adventure 1, and we get new additions to the cast. We get Davis and Vimon, a personal fave of mine and Gino's. We get Cody and his Armadillomon, big guess on what creature he's named after. Anteater. <laughs> and we have Yo Lee and Hawkmon. TK and Kari return in this in this series and serve as kind of generational gaps. The they bridge. were too young in the first series to do anything super important except for, you know, help defeat the big bad. And be but battery. now they actually get to be main characters, sort of, kind of. The new kids get new digivices because we've got to push up more toys so they can now travel back and forth to the digital world with any computer they can get their hands on. They're in the Matrix! They are in the Matrix. So, now the, old, the Adventure 1 kids are still kicking around But they don't get the skills to go through computers and do that. So every time an Adventure 2 kid goes and an Adventure 1 kid goes with them, they have to hitch a ride. They can't just go by themselves. It's carpooling. It's good for the environment. 
There you right? go. It's like downloading a zip file instead of just downloading a big uh, a big file. Mm -hmm. It's the Squish version. It's more stuff. This series featured the first of many Digivolution gimmicks. This one is DNA Digivolving, where two of our main cast fuse together to create a bigger, badder Digimon with a much stupider name. Go on. For example, Vimon, a little blue thing with an aggressive attitude, who is partners with our Davis Goggleware and Guy, merges with another one of our protagonists that I have yet to reveal, and they create the Digimon that they will rely on for the entire rest of the series. And it gets to digivolve two more times, whereas the other characters fuse with themselves and are not as important. And gets dropped so hard, they're like my ex-girlfriend. Like, oh, I can't. Yo. The big bad this time is the Digi Emperor. A human that can control black gears that can turn the, the mass populace of Digimon evil. Don't say. No, no. Big guess on how you get, you know, those mass populist Digimon to stop being evil. A uh, friendship? You punch it real hard! With friendship? With I'm friendship. Don't forget the friendship. It's extra sauce, yeah. I promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cognitive recalibration. It's fine. <laughs> okay. It's all code anyway. Got it. Mm. We come friendship. to find out that Ken Ichijoji, our fourth and final Digidestin of these of the connected series is actually the Digi Emperor. And venturing through the sacrifice of his partner Wormon and the, you know, recalibration and reintroduction of Wormon, he joins the team and he doesn't get to do the other gimmick this season, which is Armor Digivolve. So the O2 kids take powers from the O1 kids and take on forms that are based off of it. So to take a step behind the scenes, there was some mishandling with multiple plot lines in the series. So for example, a plot line that was the Dark Ocean, which was the mass inhabitants of all the despair and all the loss ever experienced in the digital world, Kari got to visit. But there's a cliffhanger episode where we see Digimon, it's completely in shadow, we never elaborate who that is, and we completely skip past in the next episode 100%. Beautiful. Best way to handle that. What? <laughs> Overall, this series, Adventure 2 and Adventure 1, they are of a pair. And if you manage to get through Adventure 1, where it's a, a lot of lip flaps from early animation and a lot of reused footage to, just to save time in animating everything, I encourage you to watch Adventure 2 because there's a reason on this show, Davis and Vimon, his partner, get top spots in some of our host hearts. Yo, dude, Davis is such a thug, man. I love that kid. That dude likes to go in headstrong, doesn't think a thing, and let me tell you, that's the <laughs> thing that I enjoy. He's such a thug. I fucking love him. <laughs> He's the kind of guy whose problem-solving technique is smacking the other guy harder and more than they smack you. What's that? The apocalypse? I'm gonna slap the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Fist first, talk later. What's that? My big Digimon is gonna take us around the world and introduce us to international Digidestin? Yeah, I guess that's just a thing I do. Yeah, no big deal. That brings us to Tamers, Season 3. <clears throat> Tamers lives on the high pedestal of the original three. It is the dark stepbrother of Adventure 1 and Adventure 2. It has yeah. much the same writers and as much as the behind-the-scenes team, but it takes place, contrary to the other two, in a fictional world with fictional characters. No, no. This one is our world. Okay. Not the human world our world i got a question for you this never had any connection to anything else right it was just it's like its own standalone yeah version of it yeah okay yeah this is why digivolution works a little bit weirder and i'll go into that in a hot second okay. are they are they making digimon an arg no they're making digimon a lovecraft horror show continue 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 so, written by legendary horror writer his name's on screen i'm going to attempt to pronounce it here we go chiaki konaka a self-proclaimed lovecraftian writer he is the main reason this series carries its dark and spooky tone. This series lives in the surreal and horror, but not like blood and guts, because it's still aimed at like, you know, 8 to 13 year olds. More of body horror and shock value. Mm. Body horror is not better. Not, not better. Our protagonists this time are Takato, our goggles wearing weenie with the heart in the right place. 
Weenie boy. His, his Digimon is the red dinosaur named Gilmon. Oh yeah, okay. I remember that one. Look me in the eye and tell me it's not an Agumon ripoff. So, in this universe, Digimon is a franchise and the first two seasons exist as a card game and an anime. And Gilmon is actually Takato's OC. Look me in the eye and tell me it's not an Agumon ripoff. That gets accidentally <laughs> scanned by his Digivice and then becomes real. So, yes, kind of? Talk about self-inserts, goddamn. This dude got self-inserted so hard, he creates his own Digivolutions that have never been seen before. At least he had a long, thought-out backstory, I guess. He, he put in the groundwork on his OCs. Red and Big Claws. I don't think that's, uh, that's depth. But anyway, our next one is our token female of the group. This is Rika. She is a brooding, dark, emo, raven type from Teen Titans, whose they Digimon know is Renamon, who, fun fact, in the fan base, have taken Renamon and made her a little more human personified than, than the show initially intended. Uh, uh, should I be concerned? And by that, I mean she's furry bait. <laughs> Yikes. So I just learned, actually, the, the first one you were talking about, it was Gilmon, right? Yes, sir. That the voice actor, voice actress, I should say, was Goku's voice actress, uh, Masoko Nozawa. In English, it's Steve Bloom. Yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> what, is, what a different change. Fucking you know, Steve. You know, the English voice actor for Spike from Cowboy Bebop. Wolverine for most of Marvel stuff nowadays, too. Mm -hmm. Our last protagonist is our smart one. This is Henry. He's our brains. He's logical. He's but he's morally driving. He doesn't like to fight in anything but the video games. In the video games, he's making. He would rather do a pacifist run than anything. Good for else. him. His okay. partner is a little green guy with floppy ears named Terriermon. Truly, one of the cutest things you could ever look at. <laughs> this show is a slow burn, spending roughly like the first third in the human world, with simply based on character interactions as the driving force like we don't actually enter the digital world or deal with the big bad till like the start of the you know two-thirds of the way through by the time the original series was a third of the way through we had digivolved a handful of times with all the characters we had a lot we had almost dealt with the first villain no no super slow burn our sweet baby gilmon is so fresh and new to the concept that he has troubles going back to his previous stage once he's achieved digivolution for the first time so every time he digivolves he goes absolutely feral and starts just wrecking up the place because he has no <laughs> idea how to control like this much strength and this much body and has no idea what he's doing. In his defense, he is somehow an even more artificial than normal digital monster. Is another example of dark digivolution. This uh, this red dragon type is Magidramon, as in magical dragon mon. Don't ask me. I'm just the messenger, guys. Why is a magical girl dragon evil? <laughs> I think I want to question you after hearing such things as Devimon, Digidestin, and such and such. Just go on, man. So, this dark digivolution is when our poor boy Takato is like, hey, Digivolve, or we got some big problems and we're all gonna die. And Gilman's like, I don't want to. And then, basically, he gets forced to. Oh. Okay. Oh, dear. And so achieves that form. And that form... If you thought the other forms were feral and like to wreck up the place, this one has no concept of shouldn't wreck that thing up. Just burn it all to the ground, call it a day. Everything to ashes. Oh my god. Burning eating the entire Scorched Earth tactics, I guess? Correct. Yikes. But, you know, through the power of friendship, he eventually gets worn down and they don't ever achieve this form again. But it certainly looks fucking cool. The gimmick this time is uh, something called Bio Merge. And so our heroes and their Digimon become one for example our gilmon digivolution goes from a our red dinosaur looking guy to what is basically a red knight with a big lance in his hand and a shield i remember having a toy of this dude a mixture of our main hero and his digimon the other kids get to do it too they're less exciting that's the main one i like <laughs> Fair enough. i'm telling the story this is the way it goes understood mr unreliable narrator mr exposition in my super humble opinion, this is the apex of uh, Digivolution. This is like the, you know, in the other series we had our companions merging together as opposed to our friendship with these creatures being symbolic in a way. This is like the best version of Mon and Man together. There isn't a good portmanteau for that one, I'm afraid. Yeah, it, yeah. It's not as good as Digital Monsters, sorry. 
The difference between watching your best friends become one and becoming one with your best friend. Everybody knows my best friend. I don't want to become one with him. Our Personal final decision. Third is absolutely fucking bonkers. After one of the side characters loses their partner Digimon, because in this season we've got like three or four side characters that also have Digimon, but I don't care about them, so they're not getting listed. Our partner, our human, uh, Jerry, loses her Digimon, and her body becomes possessed by the AI known as the D-Reaper. Uh... No, this is not another name for the movie Teeth. This is a little girl possessed by a computer virus and mm-hmm. now wants to eat everything. This computer virus's um... initial intention was to just clean up excess data and now it got confused that everything's excess and wants to murder us all. No. It takes uh, a lot of forms, like uh, yeah. weird umbrella looking things. It's this big spaghetti monster looking thing in its big ass <coughs> form, but it talks in like Jerry's like young girl voice the whole time. Wow. Wonderfully horrifying. So as they're trying to punch it, it's like, no, don't. That hurts. That's a yikes. The end of this series is truly gut wrenching as the Digimon, after defeating the D Reaper and putting Jerry, you know, back together again the digimon end up in their super baby forms for the first time and they are adorable but immediately after that battle ends everything digimon well actual digimon get put back into the actual digital world and they immediately have to say goodbye to their partners what a heartbreaking premise to do over and over again but they're gonna get you with it every time i guess the message is acceptance of loss Enjoy the things you have while you have them. A lot of these mm-hmm. series that uh, that we're going to continue talking about very much play with the concept of childhood. It is the legacy of growing up. It is about kids, but not for kids. And not a for kids dub where they, you know, cut out guns and put cigarettes. Is that even better? I mean, I would argue maybe it is for kids, but it's for kids. You know how it's a whole thing that Sesame Street was really good about teaching kids how to deal with stuff that might not come up in, you know, a normal kid's life. And if it does come up, their their adults may no longer be in a position to help them with it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe Digimon's doing that because the partners are like a combination of pet and best friend, right? And it's totally a thing in kids' lives that your pets die, your friends move away. You have to say goodbye to people, and sometimes you might see them again, and sometimes you really never will. And you have to be okay with that and just cherish your friendship for what it was for the time you had together. And yeah, you'll miss them, but it's gonna be okay. Did you just break down the psych- psychology of this whole series? That was maybe, and she, and she absolutely nailed it. Well, and I want fucking... everybody to remember what she just said because it's gonna come up <laughs> in about fifteen years of me talking. You got a you got a shovel from that air table. You 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 were just. Had that nice and buried, and you just pull that one out, man. I'm glad my uh, college education has been paying off. College skills! <laughs> college, college skills. skills. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. So, Ooh. an official audio drama put on YouTube for completely legal listening was put out in Japanese. But hey, if you're on YouTube already, why don't you hand us a sub by searching Nerd Crusade? Ho ho ho. Slick plug. Yeah, you can find the official audio drama in an English adaptation, but if you speak and listen Japanese, that's probably better. Yeah, it usually is. Now we're on series four, ladies and gentlemen, and this one's called Frontier. This is the one that our good buddy Beastie, when we were doing development of this episode, was like, oh yeah, that's the one I stopped because we didn't have Digimon anymore. We had the humans becoming Digimon. Gotcha, there we go. Ooh, I'm already not liking any of that. So, Just a reason for cool though. Part two? No, no. no. <laughs> okay, on screen is some of the, the Digivolutions. But for us at home, for a while, Disney owned the rights to this series. And this is where... Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, so this one and the following one, this is where most fans dropped out completely. Whether they were too busy growing up and moved on to other shows like anime at the time. Or not catching the episodes regularly because behind the scenes, Jedex aired the episodes out of order. Oh, and boy. anybody who knows anything about TV shows... Taylor That's how you kill a show. Uh, yeah. For those that didn't stick around, allow me to refresh you and maybe even inspire you to watch this series. 
Uh, Frontier stands as the turning point of the future of the series. From here on, the series gets divisive. Our main characters this time are Takuya, our goggle-wearing fire element leader person, Koji, the spirit of light, our knockoff mat for this season, Zoe, the token girl who gets a butterfly transformation and inhabits the element of wind, JP, our low-confidence eldest fat kid of the group who embodies thunder, Tommy, the youngest and actual baby who inhabits ice. Okay. Yep. We, later in the series, big spoilers for, you know, a 13-year-old series, we get Koji's brother, Koichi, whose existence was secret to Koji, and his element is darkness. Secret twins! Secret twins! Unlike other series, this one only features Digimon as side characters, as, like, villains or exposition dumpers or even comedic relief. Bokomon. He looks okay. puntable. <laughs> and the dude wearing the pants, God. that's Nemon. I see. Bokomon hey, and Nemon don't digivolve. Okay. They just are there for A, comic relief, and B, exposition dumping. Literally reading a book as we keep going through our adventure and, you know, exposition dumping as needed. Damn. The plot revolves around a legendary battle that happened in the past about 5,000 years ago. This fight was actually done pretty well in their series. This battle was fought between the beast-type Digimon and the human-type Digimon, concluding with this 5 plus 1, because darkness, uh, we don't know darkness actually happened yet. It's 5, and then it's one more, so make 6 for each side. It, they were having a, they were basically having a civil, like, like, species war. Absolutely, they were. And so a it is... digi-civil war? Come on, do name it properly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm lost, because it, it's it's a bit civil, but it's a bit, like, it's, like, it, like I can't call it racist, like, species, prejudice? I have no idea, but, like, it's animals versus humanoids, and, I mean, that's some type of... Classes, it's, almost. Right? Yeah, exactly. Xenophobic? Question mark? Uh, uh, almost. Yeah. So, each kid gets a beast type and a human type, and as the bridge between both are meant to put back the world. Can the power of friendship defeat fantasy digi racism? We're about to find out. <laughs> what a I silly question, this... but of course. Absolutely it does. Of course you. you got... It's like I've been talking about this series for the last little bit or something. Come on, you forget friendship <laughs> is the fuel of Japan. Come on. Come on. The Ew. mega big, big bad this time is Lucemon, a Lucifer-looking half-angel, half-devil humanoid Digimon that gets fucking bopped, then Dark <laughs> Digivolves itself into the big dragon with an orb okay. and just wants to absorb the digital world and become the biggest bad whoever biggest bad. The main complaint about this series is that it's too different from before. Okay. And to an extent, I accept that criticism. However, <clears throat> let me just climb up on my soapbox here. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> need, a, need a hand up? Are you okay? Yeah, a hand up would be great, actually. Yeah, I'm, a little, I'm, a, I'm a little short. Um, I'm going to give you a little lift. You a step ladder? Yeah. <laughs> check your mic, check your Watch mic. this fucking series, guys? <laughs> Listen, so Frontier has a lot of character interactions. It has comedic relief in Nemon, who's consistently being like, oh, I thought that was a dessert, or like something like really stupid, like an out wildish something to the you know, make us all laugh and make everything not so doom and gloom. Our characters are really developed because their plot initially is, well, their motivation is, well, let's just keep going. At this In the series, they get to go home whenever they want. Should they have turned around and got back on their train mon and mm -hmm. gone home? So the kids keep going and they choose to wander. As opposed to the other ones which are like either lost or get to co come and go as they please or, you know, exist in actual reality. These guys Understood. choose to be digi-destined. And then, you know, through the magical plot, are like, oh, I guess we're forced to partake in this now. But they wander for a long-ass time with no specific way to go until they run into a big bat that they can then punch. The series is mainly driven by its characters and its comedic relief. I highly, highly recommend the series. Or, if you're a real scrub, you know... Look up clips on YouTube, get familiar with the characters, and then go watch the series. Fifth season time! This is Data Squad. In Japan, it's called Savers. October mm. 1st, 2007, till November 1st, 2008, Data Squad aired in English, and it was put out by Disney on their Jet X block again. I'm looking at this art style shift, and I don't like it. 
Ah, funny you mention that. So this series turned away from the classic animation that the series had used for a while, and more shifted to kind of a uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, Zatch Bell, and Naruto type animation. Yay! It that's all. That's all good stuff. In- all good stuff to me. Yeah, it leaned hard into the anime style. Data Squad mm. was initially aimed at like 16 to 21 year olds. But in exchange for the uh, demographic that they were, that the creators were aiming for, Bandai came in and tapped on the shoulder and was like, okay, so if you're going to do that, can you introduce a thing from previous series? They're like, yeah, sure, what thing do you want? Agumon. So Agumon, a different Agumon, comes back and is one of our main Digimon again. I don't like how much I can see his nostrils in that title card. I don't like it. This series Ew. features uh, Marcus Damon. As our goggle wearing protagonist with the Agumon. It features Thomas, a Gaumon, the boxing glove blue dog looking thing, Yoshi, our human, and Lalamon, a flower with the most annoying voice ever heard on television. And later, we have Keenan, a child who was left in the digital world but grew up hating humans and grew up in the digital world, so believes he's a Digimon and speaks as such. Okay, I know that's objectively a tragedy, but that's really fucking funny. It is. It's absolutely hilarious. In Look essence, at me, I'm a Digimon. No child? Yeah, it gets real confusing when he gets handed a Digivice to make his Digimon Digivolve. It's just to nail that home again. I was going to give this thing a shot. Mino but... use this, and then they, you know. Yeah, there we go. I was to give this thing a shot, but then I saw this screen cap of this, and I'm like, this, this, this is no way. Can you imagine trying to punch a small orange dinosaur? In he fact, should that's be... how they first meet. That's how they introduce each other and, like, accept each other as bros. What? This kid should be dead, but okay. Boys being boys. <laughs> Guys what? being dudes. Loki? Dude. No, they're not. That's, that's <laughs> dinosaur. Don't. I just realized, Loki, I think I might have seen this parts of this series, this version, but I'm not sure. Through the first the... ten episodes, Marcus and Agumon fight and develop their working relationship with the Digital Accident Tactics Squad, or DATS for short, basically, oh. it's Digimon Cops. Boo. Uh, we know Their official uh, <laughs> designation, the thing that they're um, designed to do, is to keep peace between the human and digital worlds. And by that we mean, we're going to punch all the Digimon in the face in the human world so that way we can send them back. Cool. Mm. Sounds like cops in real life. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Our main enemy this time round is a man named Karada, who was part of an initial human team to go explore the digital world initially, but then got so butthurt about something that not only did he kill the guardian of Keenan, who was a Digimon called Frigimon, who was a big bear looking thing. Yeah. Imagine Ice Bear from the Wee Bear Bears, but like with motherly instincts, but also developed like his own Digimon of sorts, his, the, his own Digimon-human hybrids to go attack our Digidestin this time around. In a last-ditch effort from Kurata, he explodes a bomb. With the power of friendship, they stop the bomb. They were noticed by King Drazel, who's just like, you know what, fuck it, I had enough of both you guys. I'm just gonna end you both. Uh, King Drazel, no. That's King Drizzy, thank you. <laughs> King Drizzy Drazel. No, oh, jeez. This kind of disrespect is why he's going to kill us all. Right? <laughs> yeah. You don't disrespect the Driz. Like, come on. So now Marcus and Agumon have to go fight literal uh, Digimon God. And it gets super anime because our first fight is just bros being bros. Our, our last fight is versing literal God himself. A true JRPG progression. <laughs> I was like Final Fantasy. It's super fucking anime. Like, this series is fine. And I enjoy it. But like... It's a good time. It's a good romp through. You can skip like the first four or five episodes because just bros being bros for a little while. Mm-hmm. After that, it's got enough of a plot to keep you going. But we got set up with a mystery on who Marcus's dad is. And then we drop it for about mm, 15 episodes. And then the episode before we reveal him, we get reminded that the, vis- the mystery actually still exists. Hey, remember, we still don't know about this. Uh, I know we told you to not worry about it, but now you should worry about it again. Hint, hint. Here's a story that we were talking about. We dropped it. We brought it back. (laughs) That means we're done with the first five. Only a handful more to go. The series did so poorly on screen and fucking everywhere it was ever released. The toy line had to save it from going completely like it ditches 
the Digivolution sequence so hard that the standard new system is called Cross Evolution, or Digicross in Japanese, mm-hmm. wherein two Digimon combine Megazord style to make a bigger what? version of the main one. What? That's different. The English dropped the word Digi? Yeah. That's that's why it did poorly. Come on, they were setting themselves up for failure. The branding's right there and you're not using it. No, no. In <laughs> English, it was called Digifuse, which is objectively worse. Digifuse. You're right. You're right. right. I don't it, like it. <laughs> I I did you refuse to use that? See what I did there? I, I see it. I oh. did you see it? Did you hear it? Oh, oh my god, stop it. <laughs> yeah, let's cut that out now. In this series, our main protagonist is Shoutmon, which is our little red guy with the screws that's on screen right okay. now. And he digifuses with his teammates a literal boombox and a lion with a with a spiky drill for a tail. He joins with one of his friends. He doesn't become, oh, you know, something of the two names mixed together. He just becomes Shoutmon X and then insert number here. <laughs> wow, they uh, kept it real simple then, huh? So for the, the, the one on screen is Shoutmon X3, where our red guy, our boombox, and our lion all, you know, Megazord style combined together. Why are we messing around with this Transformers ripoff bullshit? Because Bandai and Toei hadn't realized the gold they'd struck three times over oh, in the previous you, series. You said Bandai, and they sell they sell really well with you know Mecha, so mm-hmm. that explains that. Mm. Well, even like the design of the characters, you can see are like toy based. Like this series leaned hard into the toys, and maybe leaned a little too hard. Yeah. So. After this and its sequel series that I'm just not going to talk about because it wasn't dubbed in English so hard, like at all. It's on Crunchyroll. You can watch it if you want, but eh, I'm not going to. So having the toy line save you doesn't put you and the games you release and all of your supplemental material in any state to come out. It puts so much of a hard pause on the franchise that they had to do a spin-off franchise to inject a little bit of life in. They had to give it, you know, uh, an adrenaline shot. In Please, Japan, too. it doesn't suck, we swear. <laughs> in, so in Japan, there was a spin-off series called Applemon. But... Applemon. Applemon. <laughs> That's okay, it's only in Japanese, we're gonna ignore it. Fans of the franchise were so distraught with, like, with Digimon Fusion and Applemon only, like, not at all coming to the West... Mm -hmm. That they actually started a Kickstarter and Toei and Bandai noticed. And so when two games, Digimon Cyber Sleuth and Digimon Hacker's Memories, were coming out in Japan, three years later, through the power of this Kickstarter and different, like, crowdfunding, things like that, they were able to inspire Bandai and Toei to actually release the game here, you know, three years later. But we still got it in full English. Oh, I mean, when a fan base talks, you gotta listen. Mm -hmm. Not just talks, yells. So after getting that game, Bandai realized and Toei realized, well, hey, all of the people that watched Adventure 1 and Adventure 2 growing up are all old enough to buy, like, they all have, you know, expendable money now. Who needs to make new fans when you can just take advantage of your existing fans? Hold that thought a minute, actually. Put a pin in that. We'll come back to that. So, in 2013... We were announced that we were finally going back to the adventure world. And it took three years taking place in canon anyway. Three years after the end of Adventure 2. 2015 came around and we were given the first of six movies. But Crunchyroll has decided that it's not six movies. It's actually 26 episodes of its own series. Because they decided to cut it up for no fucking reason. God damn it, Crunchyroll. We love you, but jeez, man, come on. Yeah. So the first one we got was called Reunion. And so the six movies are Reunion, Determination, Confession, Loss, Coexistence, and Future. That sounds like some, like, seven stages of grief shit. Yeah, like <laughs> some AA development thing, like Jesus. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Oh. What I can tell you is there's a new character introduced, and her name is Meku. And she has a new Digimon, and she becomes their ninth, the ninth Digidestin. And her Digimon is named Mekomon. Mekomon. So it's May and May. Yep. Meku can be described as a shy and irrelevant. Mekumon can be described as edgy orange and irrelevant. Truly meant for each other? <laughs> In fact, if you've seen it, the way they stumbled upon each other, it's almost as if. 
It's almost as Understood. if they were uh, digi-destined for each other. Stop. Uh, <laughs> this series is officially on Crunchyroll, and you can see it legally on YouTube by purchasing it through there. It's in a beautiful DVD pack. I own it on Blu-ray and DVD combo packs. Which I borrowed, and thank you for that ride. Thank you. Now, knowing that you've seen this one all the way through, is there anything you'd like to say and contribute to this section? So, it was nice to revisit it after so long, because I haven't really watched Digimon in years. So, uh, watching it did pull back a lot of, like, memories from what I from what I do remember. They mentioned the whole, the, the way the titles sound like, you know, going through the stages of grief and everything, man. Like, they, like, this is, it's not the same, it's not the same kind of Digimon there I'm, that I'm watching, man. It was a, it was a completely different rundown of that show and like much it's almost ditch the happy yeah it's almost as if they really took it in and like there was like you know like you grew up with it and now you're older and shit sucks out there the role's not exactly very clear as to what it should be and everybody should feel a bit a bit you know like a little lost and exactly this is exactly how everybody feels in this whole thing so i mean that makes sense if they're trying to appeal to the audience who watched it back when they were kids yeah but at the same time, I do wonder how effective that actually is at engaging that audience properly. Because I know a lot of people, when they want stuff related to their childhood shows, they want something that feels like their childhood shows. But you see, so, the thing is... I suppose this was before all the gritty reboots started really taking hold. So, oh, I mean, well, the kids are no longer kids. They're, they're practically gone on the doorstep of being young adults For now. Example, so I'm like, hey, they're a bit different now. Set- when Ty and Matt and the gang, except for Mimi, who is doing different funny things, are yes. graduating high school and actually have to exit into adult life. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to talk much more about this particular series of movies or episodes or however you wish to enjoy this series. What we will say, I've got here three points that will sell you on this series. Are you ready? Go for it. Now that it's released on Blu-ray and a bunch of freaking everywhere, it's the easiest of the Digimon series to get yourself to, to get a hold of. Honestly, it is. Reason two, every other kid that is not Matt and Ty get a new Digivolution, yes. which are great for their character development with their actual Digimon. Now they all, yeah. as of the end of this, they all had the same level. They all existed at the mega level. Oh, and I gotta say that like when it comes down to shit going down, they slap the shit out of each other, man. It is no holds barred. The animation is very fluid. Very. And... At the very end of uh, these six movies exist reason number three, and that is big titted wing villain. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. So as oh uh, Yes, go ahead. No, no, just... Oh god. <laughs> so as Shino alluded to, we have one last thing to go to before the entire universe was rebooted and that series came out. As that series was in development, a different team was working on last evolution kuzina and this is the final movie and the final thing in canon for the digimon adventure franchise it is the end and so i will not give a too much of an explanation because again it's on blu-ray it's on your streaming it's not on well it's on youtube you can buy it it's on crunchyroll it's been on crunchyroll since like halfway through august as of this recording it's super easy to get a hold of what i will tell you is because it's the end some things have to go some deeply rooted aspects of their childhood that they held very dear are need to exist in a new form for them. Mm. In promotional art for this, you will see that Agumon and Gabumon get new evolutions, new digivolutions. Canonically, okay. these are called the uh, Kizuna or last evolution spirits. Sure sounds like a last something. It sure does, doesn't it? Mm. I will tell you that my viewing of this movie made me actually cry. Yeah, this sounds very emotional. This is it's one last ride. It's, it hurts because the like the very cover itself has has the whole gang waving at you, right? Like right. you know you know it's done. This very much deals with the oh now that we're adults and not just like oh we're going into high school, as in like you know we want to establish jobs for ourselves and we want to have futures and you know we're we're no longer looking as like dating people we're looking at significant others in adult relationships and yeah. we drink beer because we can <laughs> yeah we're adults man <laughs> and moving forward into more into being full-fledged adults not just young adults yeah so that brings us to the latest entry in the Digimon franchise which is Crunchyroll likes to call Digimon Adventure in brackets 2020 
This is a brand new retelling of the original series. And it takes the Japanese movies that were, there was three of them. They got combined to become the Digimon movie, which features the fantastic song, the Digi Rap. (laughs) That I promise you, just about 20 years later, still slaps and has no right to. This takes the three movies and weaves them into the story organically. So as of the, the recording of this episode, we now have the Digidestin and their kids achieving the ultimate stage. And that's it. That's as far as we're probably going to go until we get closer to the end of the series. The animation... Okay, picture on top of picture and it's just an evolution, right? But here they went the full the full force of like drawing it out. One, you know, one step into the other step into the other step and it's a full, like a full thing. So like fluidity, again, is one of our favorite words on this show. And like, it looks good so far for what I'm seeing here. It is such an amazing show i'm a handful episodes behind but this deals with oh say so ty and izzy they knew each other first according to this show and we don't get until like episode 12 until that is when we get all the kids really no really oh that's been yeah it's way different so we explore a character development between like ty and izzy and agumon and tentomon the red bug looking thing we establish connections before we start evolving and transforming into more Hmm. It's like someone sat down with the entire plot of the series and was like, okay, so we've got some character development, but how do we explain that they're friends? Show me that they're friends. Like, show, don't tell. And that's it. That's all of Digimon. Oh. If I have any final words to say is that there is a fantastic game that exists on all modern consoles now, actually. It is called Digimon Cyber Sleuth. According to the community, this is the best digimon game is a jrpg so you know one minute you're punching your friend and figuring out how you're you know how you go on in life and by the end you're punching king drizzle <laughs> <Jeez. Drizzy. laughs> he Drizzy has it coming Gosh. he definitely does if i could make a second recommendation on the Nintendo DS, a platform that nobody likes playing right now because we exist in a 16 by 9 you know hd era <laughs> <laughs> there exists a pair of games just like pokemon did with diamond and pearl there exists a digimon world dawn and digimon world dusk these are fantastic little games i've got not a lot to say about them but i will tell you that they're great final thoughts anybody thank you for the ride when you said you you knew a lot about digimon you weren't fucking kidding he did not <laughs> there was no lie told oh and so thank you for that because uh, there, a lot of it i i did not even know existed so I sure frequently think about that fighting game that was really frustrating. (laughs) I know what you're talking about, too. Did I convince any of you to watch any of these particular series? Oh, Oh, come on. You know know me. You don't have to bend my fucking arm to make me watch stuff. No, your arm's reverse it is. Come on. I was talking to, uh, to Beastie and Table. I might watch that final series. Like, I'll rewatch the uh, first adventure, maybe even event 02, and then watch that that finale. Because I kind of want to get kicked in the emotions. It'll be fun. Which one was the worst one again? Uh, fusion, I think. Yeah, Fusion. Was fusion, the ones that I, was fusion the one that I talked about? Or... No, no, okay, never mind. Fusion was Sheltmon X3 and X, uh, Sheltmon... Yeah, yeah. Watching that shit. I'm watching Sorry, all the and then the last one is Sheltmon X7 Superior Mode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm watching that yeah, well, for sure. I, I probably might revisit Tamers, if that's the case. That's Fusion. that's the one with the that's the one with the humanoid, right? And be, that's the form. one with like uh the the red dragon that with the Gilmon with the OC and the furry bait. All we have <laughs> left to did you do is well, why don't you uh did you talk us out there, Beastie? Oh gosh, did you free us from this hell? Oh man! <laughs> before you, well, did you emancipate our souls, please? Did you not abuse the did you word before I use it? Yeah. Well, we did die. Can I? Uh, <laughs> Can I take this out? Before I digi start pulling my hair out. I'm not even going to do my outro then. <laughs> Give us the digi output, my guy. Digi, please. Are, Thank we, done? You. Are we done? Did you see? Did you hear? I don't want to even make a creative. God damn it. Are you guys done? We might be digi done. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that brings us to the conclusion of our digital adventure for this ride. And also to our socials, which is on our Twitter, at Crusade Nerd. Our Instagram is at Nerd Crusade. And we also upload every Wednesday to YouTube. And you can download any previous web episode or listen on your mobile device to the anchor.fm website or wherever podcasts are found by searching Nerd Crusade.
and that's to be continued with friendship. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, go ahead and button mash a thumbs up. If you want to swing by when we have a new video, web up the sub button. Oh, and while you're at it, hit the bell to be notified by. Oh,